And one day this guy came to my dad, this is a true story, it's like something you see on Cops or something, right? This guy comes over and tells my dad, he says, check this out, man, you can sail around with me on the world on the boat, but he goes, you can't bring your kid with you. So one day, and, and, and my parents were the only two that came to California to start a living. So I never met my mom's side of the family, I never met my dad's side of the family. So I literally, I got no cousins, no brothers, no uncles, no nieces, no nothing. I never met either side of the family. And what ended up happening to me was one day my dad came home and within the two week time frame, my dad packed all their stuff and my parents left me at the age of 13. They gave me 500 bucks and pretty much said good luck to a 13 year old kid. And um, you know, I went from, like I said, middle class home literally within a two week time frame to the streets. I slept in laundry mats, I slept in donut stores. Times I didn't have a place to sleep. I used to walk around the park all night, all that. Um, you know, you do the couch tour, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you stay at someone's house, your welcome runs out after a while, so you're trying to find the next pad to stay at. And uh, you know, I was doing that for about two years, right? At the age of 15, I met this girl, and what ended up happening was this girl, she took me in, and I, I just broke down. I'm 15 years old, I started crying, I told her straight out, I said, you know what? I don't got a place to live, I got nowhere to go, I don't know what I'm doing, and she was like, you know what, let me talk to my dad. Her dad was a pastor for Calvary at that time. So what ended up happening was he took me in and I got to sleep on the couch, but he told me in order to live here, I gotta hear the word of God. This was at the age of 15 years old. But what ended up happening was that the girl, like I just kept her happy because I thought that if I didn't keep her happy, I thought that she would tell her dad and she'd have me kicked out of the house. You know what I mean? When you start having to pay bills, that's when you start thinking. So what ended up happening is she took me to this acting class and I don't know if any of you guys ever been to, uh, to like a drama or something like that, but they tell you like, close your eyes and picture you're in a jungle. Uh, they tell you like, reach the stars and grab a candy bar. I'm, I go to 7-Eleven, homie, it ain't that serious. You know what I mean? But they tell you this knucklehead stuff, right? So I'm in the class and I'm acting a fool. It, it's like winning the lottery. I don't know what happened. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. What ended up happening was there was a producer who was sitting in class who was scouting out talent. I didn't expect that, whatever. He comes up to me straight out after the class. He goes, you know what, man, you're kind of funny, whatever. Because I was being the class clown interrupting, making jokes, cracking jokes or whatever. And he tells me, hey, look, check this out, man. He goes, and the first thing I ever did at the age of 15 years old was a Taco Bell commercial for the Superfish Tacos. That was the first thing I ever did in my life. And so the producer comes up to me after the class, and you know you don't know if it's real or not, but you just give him the number thinking like, all right, this might, you know, if, if, if it cracks, it cracks, if it don't, don't, right? So I just gave him my number like whatever, right? And he told me straight out, he said, hey kid, check this out, man, you wanna be in a Taco Bell commercial? And I said, oh, cause I'm Mexican, huh, what's up? And I just looked him up and down, hey, but I told him straight out, I said, you know what, there's no way that I'm gonna back up that Mexican imitation food, there's no, I said, how much? All right, look, just this once, but I'll, I'll do it, don't let it get out, all right? <laughs> so what ends up happening is I do this commercial for Taco Bell, now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the entertainment business, this is the way that it works. Every time they show the commercial, you get a check. So imagine working one day in your life, but they show the commercial 15 times in one day. That's 15 checks for doing nothing. So I worked on that commercial one day in my life, but they ran it up to a year. So for one year, I was getting paid. I thought it was like a computer mess up, but I was still cashing the checks. You know what I mean? I didn't care. So I called up the producer and I told him straight out. I said, hey, check this out, man. I keep on getting all these checks. I don't understand why I'm getting paid. And he goes, no, 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 that's how it works. He goes, every time they show the commercial, you get a check. I said, what? I said, man, well, I want to be an actor if that's how it go down. So I was like, hook me up with another one. You know what I mean? I'll do a Carl's Jr. What's up? <laughs> so I'm ready, brother. You know what I mean? And um, so what happened was, at the same time that I was making legit money, I was making criminal money because of the fact that I was banging and doing that knucklehead stuff. And then I'm making legit money on the side with the acting. In the first, like, Three, four years of my career, I was like the dude, like if, like, if you go to like uh, Burger King, I was like the one in the orientation videos. Uh, if you guys look back at some of those videos, you'll see me right there. I was the one like, this is how you wrap a hamburger and that type of stuff. And so it was a trip, but you know, someone told me acting was easy, but they just never said you had to read. And so I go to the audition and I'm tripping out because when I'm at the audition, you know, I got to sign in and stuff and they're calling me in 
And I'm like, all right, whatever. And, I, and at that time, you know, I'm bringing my homeboys. I'm coming all unprofessional, you know what I'm saying? I'm all creased out, I'm like, what's up? And they're like tripping out on me, like, who is this dude? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, tell me what's up. They're like, well, you gotta do this audition and this and that. I'm like, you called me, let's just hurry it up. And I take off and leave. I started getting a reputation being known as the mess up guy. So like, you know, if you get hired for like Walmart or Target, like I was the dude who was stealing a CD out of the store. And they were like, these are the proper procedures to do if you see someone stealing in the store, these are the security measures. I'm always the Latino, huh? And so what ends up happening, man, is that kicked off for a while. I started developing a reputation. I started being the mess up guy for all these like businesses and doctors and they just called me, you know. But back then when I was young, I was a scraggly looking little kid, man. I looked like the karate kid, my God. So I'm just telling you my testimony and I got lost in a world that I thought was the VIP first class life, right? And so, you know, I was going to clubs and for like six years, like my career was good. I was getting movies after movies, television shows after television shows. I was getting paid for appearances. I was getting, what's up, man? what's up, what's up? Ready. Yeah, you just sit right there and I'm good. Can't sneak up on me, homie. Hey, hey, give it up for a second chance one more time, man. I was tripping out. That's my boy right there. This is the only fool I know who could turn a glass pipe into an instrument, man. <laughs> and get away with it in church, man. Come on, man. I thought he was gonna start off like, <laughs> was like whoa, 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 whoa. Second chance, man. We're gonna give you a third chance. Don't trip today, all right? <laughs> That's my boy right there. I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Man, we were on level four together. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. So what ends up happening, man, is I'm, I, you know, like I said, man, I, I thought I was on a good one, but the money was my god, you know. And it was when I did Fast and the Furious. When I did Fast and the Furious, I made the first biggest, fattest check that I've ever seen in my life. And when I saw that check, and it was legit in my name, and it cleared, the criminal life cleared. I didn't have to do the criminal life no more because I was making such you know, good money right there that the criminal life could have just stopped overnight, which it did because I was making legit money now. And uh, you know what, that criminal life, you gotta watch over your back all the time and you know, blah, blah, blah. We all know that. So what ends up happening is I started getting paid like that, but it took me into a different kind of criminal activity. I started manipulating girls and uh, you know, one of my biggest sins was you know, money and females. And uh, I had a lot of bad experiences, you know, making girls think, you know, making them believe that I loved them when I didn't, you know, and stuff like that. I'm not saying I'm all that. I'm just saying, you know, that was my life, just money and females. So what I did was when, and, and see, this is one thing that I learned in my walk, you know? How many people here know that truly, truly, you can't love anybody without loving God first? Amen. And that was something that I had to learn the hard way. You know, and sometimes when we're caught up in that life, and this is the way I see it, man, is because Hollywood glamorizes sin. And, and what they do is, I don't care what anybody tells you, they show two people, you know, having intercourse, and they slap a cute little song on it, and you think you're watching a cute little movie. But that's manipulating our youth. Amen. And the way that I see it is that they're making more MTV channels that we gotta get more radical for Christ nowadays, because we're in the last days right now. And it's the television, the television is one of the biggest devil kingdoms, you know, straight out. The way that they, the way that they glamorize sin and just, you know, put cute little front covers on DVD covers and stuff, and then parents want to, you know, wonder why is our kids jacked up? Because you letting them watch MTV, you know what I mean? And um, so my thing, my thing is, uh, after six years, man, I was... You know, like I said, I was VIP the whole deal, but God took everything away from me. And so what I did was I went back to my criminal life. I got two of my homies and we planned a robbery. This is even after I did training day, after I did Bruce Almighty, Street Kings, Family Wedding. No, not Family Wedding, because I was saved at that time, but I mean, uh, that, some of the movies is what I'm saying. But that was my latest one. But what I'm saying is, Imagine if I would have got caught, you know, I'm not saying like, I understand why God set me free now, but I went back to what I know. We planned a robbery, we got away with it. This is not to glorify the devil, 
But what I'm saying is I did it because my needs were so big. And that's what happens if you put the money first because in life sometimes what happens is we chase the blessed scenes rather than the blessed sir. And what I've learned in life is that when you chase the blessed sir, the blessed scenes automatically chase you.